going live. Hello everyone, I am your teacher Robin Shaw and welcome to today's live stream. Today is another uh, question and answer so if you have any questions I will answer them. Uh, they can be about English or anything, whatever you want to talk about today. Let's get started here. I'll just adjust the camera. There, that's a little bit better. My hair is starting to get long again. Uh, maybe I should grow it out like I did last year. What do you think? All right, let's check the uh, comments. See who is here. All the good students. If you are here and watching now, you are a good student. Layla's here, Pallavi, hello. I'm um, doing well. Sleepwalker, okay, the regulars are here. Uh, Miss M. Shah, M. Shah, hey, how's it going? A for Anna, hey, A for Anna, hello. Sied Falak, how are you doing? I'm okay, CB, hello. All right, we got some students here Layla comes in with the first question how is the weather in Korea these days well starting to get cold it's about zero degrees Celsius so it's right at the freezing point um, I have to wear a winter jacket so yeah it's getting cold here how's the weather in your country Layla and other people is it cold yet Prashant, hello. Mal Malki, hello. I think I got everyone. You know, sometimes I miss names and people get sad. I don't want anybody to be sad. I want to make sure everyone's happy. All right, so if you got a question, bring it. Ask me the question. It could be about English, it could be about life, whatever. Uh, Layla says, no problem. Try to grow your beard. Well, I shaved today, but yeah, I can grow a big beard. Maybe I'll grow a big beard. I don't know. Problem with the beard is my passport is like this, clean face. So if I grow a beard, I can't travel because it doesn't match my passport. One time, uh, I had a beard and I was traveling in India. I think I was at the Mumbai airport. Mumbai airport is beautiful. And they looked at my passport. They looked at me, my passport, clean face. I had the beard and then security took me to the back room and they wanted to talk to me because they were worried uh, that something strange was happening. So they talked to me for about 20 minutes. Who are you? What are you doing? Why do you look different than your passport? So I don't want to go through that experience again. All right. Said Falak, it's cold in our state. How cold is cold? You can practice typing temperature. Hey, for anime, I ask a silly question. There are no silly questions. There can be silly answers, but no silly questions. Do does beard warms you during ch uh, chilly days? And we're gonna go to the board because I'm gonna make a lesson out of this. Let's go to the board here, and your question is important, so let's paste it. All right, there's no silly questions. Let's get rid of that. Let's fix up your question, though. Let's make it a little bit bigger for you guys on phones. Does beard warms you during chilly days? Now, problem is does. We got to say do. And if we want to speak general, we got to we got to use beards, plural, and beards for general. And then warm. This would be a better question. Do beards warn you during chilly days? Or if you want to be specific to me, just me, this is general to 
kind of everyone, but for me, does your beard warm you during chilly days? All right, so this is the two possible ways you could ask this question. Do beards kind of like for everyone? And does your beard, just my experience? And I like your use of chilly days. That's good. Using the word chilly, good word to use. Uh, and the answer to that, I would say, is yes and no. I think it helps if it's windy. My beard might block the wind. Uh, but if it's just cold, you know, it doesn't really help. And my arm, my, my arm hair doesn't really help. I think maybe a little bit with the wind, but I didn't see a noticeable difference uh, keeping me warm. It's not that thick. All right, let's see. Oh, here the weather is still cool, and some days we have warm weather. Okay, I want winter, Layla. And let's check out Layla's question here. Do you have any plans to travel to, to somewhere? Usually we just take out the two. So do you have any plans to travel somewhere in the coming days? I have no plan. Uh, Layla, it's very diff still very, very difficult to travel. Uh, I, I don't like traveling in Korea because I, I've seen most parts of Korea already. Uh, but traveling to another country... Mm, I can't, I'm not even thinking about that yet. That's still very, very difficult right now. Justina, hello. Manic, hello. And Palavi comes in with a question. Let's put that question up here on the board and take a look. Sir, uh, you're too polite. Just call me Robin. What to do to memorize new words of English? And let's change this not as a what question I think this would be better as a how question how do I memorize new words in English and let's use English as how do I memorize new English words this is the best question to ask how do I mem how do I memorize New English words. Your question was what to do. That, that, that's possible, what to do, but th it's a little bit awkward. How do I memorize new English words? Well, uh, I never, I, I don't like lists. I don't like it when students uh, try to memorize lists. To me, this is not a good, not a good way. And I like reading uh, because you don't really want to memorize. What you want to do is uh, learn or acquire. Uh, you know, there, there are times to memorize lists. I would agree when I studied, uh, I studied Chinese before and Japanese and Korean. And, you know, in the beginning, you need to learn the basic words. So a list is very useful. But when you start getting higher, uh, don't don't do lists. You don't want to memorize. What you want to do is a, a lot of reading. The more reading you do, the more you will acquire and learn these words. Uh, so I always recommend reading, not lists. Okay. What's Layla asking here? What happens? When do you use this expression? And is there any formal uses for this situation? What happens when do you, uh, is the expression what happens? Uh, what happens? Uh, I'm trying to think of a situation. It would have been nice if you gave me a, a situation.
so what uh here's a question what happens when you mix baking soda and vinegar so you take baking soda and vinegar you mix them what happens what occurs I, i'm not sure of the question Layla. i can't really help you unless you give me more information what happens just just what happens uh, i don't know the situation so i had six degrees six degrees oh good six degrees is not bad cb what's cb asking if you wake up tomorrow morning and find out that you became a millionaire overnight what is the first thing you would do well cb millionaire is probably not going to change my life very much uh i know that's a lot of money but you know these days a million dollars doesn't doesn't get you very far you know you might be able to buy a nice house somewhere but you still got to save so in my case i don't know about you uh if i woke up and there was an extra million dollars in my bank account it's not going to change my life. I'm still doing the same things. I'm still teaching. I'm still coming here to talk to you guys. Uh, so for me, uh, not much money doesn't really affect my life too much. Layla, today the temperature is 25 degrees. Uh, okay, I'm going to fix your uh, expression there. So 25 you got to put this little this little circle here comes before the C. But 25 is nice. I wish I wish it was 25. I know in Saudi Arabia where you are 25 degrees is nice. Uh, but the summers of 40 45 degrees uh uh, yeah, I don't know if I can survive this. All right, who's asked? Sleepwalker asks, this skirt and blouse match. Okay. These shoes don't fit me. Okay. This dress suits you perfectly. Please check my sentences. This skirt and mouse blouse match. Looks good. These shoes don't fit me. Looks good. This dress suits you perfectly. Look, looks good. All, all of these uh, sentences uh, look fine. No problem. Nirmala Jennifer, hello. CB, what is the most profitable type of business to open in your country? I don't know. I'm not a businessman. So I don't know about profitable business. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not a businessman, CB. Manic asks, sir, will and shall, what difference? What is the difference? And let's put a question mark. Don't forget the question marks for questions. Uh, I will check your homework. I shall check your homework. Uh, in this case, there's other cases, but I'll just talk about this. Now, shall is kind of older English. We still use shall. Uh, in some situations, but this is kind of older English, uh, slowly disappearing, not so popular anymore. But in this case, I will check your English. I shall check. I will check your homework. I shall check your homework. Shall is more polite, but actually we wouldn't use this statement. Uh, with shall, we usually use it in a question form. Shall I check your homework? As more of a polite question shall I so I will you're talking about future what you're gonna do and shall used in a question asking politely if I can do something so this is usually how we use shall these days 
hope that helps. Let's move on. They were given a handout on job hunting. I don't know that sentence. Let's see. I'll hand out the exam paper. Okay. Uh, I'll hand out the exam paper. Could handout and handout have the same meaning? Well, no. You're talking about right here. This is going to be a noun. And right here is going to be verb. Uh, so they don't have the same meaning because they're different parts of speech right there. Uh, are they similar? Well, it depends on the context. Uh, in this case, I'm not sure on job hunting. I'm not sure of the expression, but a handout is usually given something for free. And this is a, a, a verb. So, uh, yeah, they're not the same. Not the same meaning is the answer. These are very different. Hand out and a handout. Uh, it's a little bit different. CB, what does it mean, lists? Oh, go to the dictionary, CB. I am not the dictionary. Thanks, Ron. When we were a pair of new, when we wear a pair of new shoes, sometimes out our feet get hurt. Okay. Let's fix this up. Thanks, Robin. Got that. When we wear a pair of new shoes, sometimes our feet get hurt. What should we call that situation when blisters formed because of it? Do we call it as a sickness? Uh, uh, my, well, my feet have blisters, you might say that. Uh, do we call it as a sickness? I, I don't know if, uh, I feet, my feet. I don't know, we just say I have blisters on my feet. I, I got blisters, We that's usually how we express that. We don't call it a specific sickness, just I got blisters on my feet. Um, So you, you might just say, my feet hurt, I got blisters, blisters on my feet. That is the only way I know to express it. My, my feet hurt, I got blisters on my feet, my feet have blisters, something like that. It's the best I can do with that one. Hi, sir. This is from Sadik Chadre. Hi, sir. I want to pr practice my American accent. How can I do it? Uh, are you in America? Because if you are not in America, you do not need American accent. So if you are in America, whatever region you are in America, because America has so many different accents, there is not one American accent. So wherever you are in America, you should be able to pick up that accent. If you're not in America and you want to learn American accent, I don't teach that. I don't, I don't follow that thinking that you need to learn American accent or British accent. I, I, English is an international language. American accent is never the, the, the standard accent unless you live there. Uh, Justina, what is your definition of success? I think you asked that before, Justina. Uh, I said, uh, my definition of success is you, you make a plan to accomplish something. So you, you plan something, you work hard, and then you accomplish that plan. So if you go through this, to me, that is success. Plan, work hard, accomplish it. You are successful. So big or small, doesn't matter. That's success. Oh, okay. Layla gave some extra information.
All right, so this case, uh, continuing with the what happened, uh, person A says, I cut my hand. And person B says, what happened? So the other is very common to say, what happened? So yeah, what happened? What occurred? What is the reason for your cut hand? Tell me the story. So what happened? And then A would continue. Uh, I was cutting onions and cut my hand with the knife. All right. I cut my hand. What happened? And then what's how? What's the reason? What occurred for this to happen? What happened? What happens? Uh, if we use what happens, what can I say? Put your card in put your card in the machine. And then person B, then what happens? What will occur? So happened, past tense, happens. What happens now? What's going to happen? Uh, the machine will give you money. I don't know. Put your, oops, put your card in the machine. Then what happens? So what occurs? The machine will give you money. Shall is used when you're supposed to do something. Yeah, I shall do it. Not necessary. It's just a very polite way to say I'll do something. Layla's in here. I speak English great. I draw pictures great. Could I say great instead of well? Um, you can, but that's very awkward. I don't. I don't think native speakers express themselves that way. I speak English great, and you know, you, when you have questions like that, you can go to Uglish. I speak English great. Let's see if anyone said that. There we go. I don't know. No, that's not. That's not the same. So, no, uh, from this, native speakers don't express themselves that way. So, no, the answer is no. Sadik, I, I answered your question. You got to wait. How do you practice your American answer? I, I, do you live in America? I talked about that. Oh, Dewey has an interesting question. I need to ring up all my friends and invite them to my party. What is the meaning of ring up? Ring up would be an idiom of call. I need to call my friends. Ring is the telephone. Ring, ring. I need to call. CB, what was the best decision you made in the last 10 years? I guess starting my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel started 2014. 
So not quite 10 years, but that allowed me to meet you, CB. What's the best thing you did, CB? Uh, Sleepwalker. Robin, have you seen some blogger did a squid game for real people? Yes. One of them won about half a million dollars. Yes. It's not a long video, but it was interesting to see. Yeah, I, I think that was Mr. Beast, the YouTuber. He created the Squid Game games. Uh, I heard of the video. Uh, I know of the video. I didn't watch the video. Uh, that's not really interesting to me, but uh, good for... I like Mr. Beast. He's a really popular YouTuber. I respect him. I heard a native English speaker say I have one ant on my mother's side so do you think we could do you think could we say that instead of saying I have one ant from my mother's side uh, okay uh, let's just uh, get rid of this I have one ant on my mother's side. I have one ant from my mother's side. I think both of those are fine. Both of those are fine. Uh, if I had to choose, probably this this one is better on my mother's side. Uh, but certainly, I think this is common too. So again, I would go to Uglish. Just pop that into Uglish there. This is one out of 40 from my mother's side right there. You can see it's being used from my mother's side. Well, let's check on my mother's side. So this had 40 on my mother's side, 134. So uh, from Uglish, I learned I learned both of them are acceptable. This one is a little more common, but both are fine. Abdul Alamri, hello. Palavi, how how many accent can a person speak? Well, most people speak with one accent, but some people I know some people that can switch between American accent and British accent. Uh, so Pallavi, don't worry about accent. You just keep working on pronunciation. A for Anna. Let's take a look. What does A for Anna have? One at a time. A small progress is also a success. We're experiencing learning process along our whole lifetime. Lifetime should be one word. Please check my sentence. I am checking your sentence. How about one step at a time? One step at a time. A small, a small progress. A small pro. Uh, I think we might express some progress is also a success. We're experiencing the learning process along. Our whole lifetime okay something like that Magdalena Siotang let's see what you got to say sir I want to ask what is the way that can be done so that we are able to understand idioms because I think idioms are very difficult to understand well <laughs> I don't I don't teach idioms so much uh, there are some common idioms you need to know but there's a lot of idioms you don't need to know uh, i don't think idioms are so important uh, for learning learners of english yes there are some popular and common idioms but you will learn them quickly but there's a lot of idioms I, every day you know students are asking about idioms and you know, when I see or hear that idiom, I'm like, I don't even know that idiom or that idiom is very uncommon. So the best way to understand idioms is read, read more. Um, 
I would not study books of idioms. That would be such a waste of time. Uh, idioms are very difficult to understand, but the more you read, the more you will understand idioms, especially if you read comic books. Layla is asking, what's the specific term do you use to express to pay off the bill for using water as well as electricity? Well, I, I need to pay the power, the power bill, maybe for electricity. I need to pay the water bill. Uh, I need to pay the utility bill utility might mean power and water together uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's what you're asking so I paid off the power bill I paid off the water bill I paid off the utility bill Layla, which one is correct? Do you like the way I cook rice? Do you like the way I cook rice with? Oh, the, well, the first one, this one. Maybe there are apps to learn idioms. I wouldn't recommend an app to learn an idiom. I wouldn't. You know, idioms are... As I said in previous videos, usually idioms are used by older and older people. And uh, you can go, you know, there's common idioms, but you can go through life without knowing a lot of idioms. No problem. All right, Layla, I'm always, I'm always used to Robin helping me when I have any English question. Many students are used to Robin helping them at the university. Did I make my sentences properly? Everything is perfect. No problem. Palavi again, how many accents can a person speak? Palavi, most people speak, you just have your one accent. Don't worry about being having two accents, just worry about one. Michelle, hi, I fell asleep. You fell asleep during my live stream or before my live stream, Michelle? Questions. I'm waiting. I caught up on the questions very fast. Let's see. Now is the best time to ask questions. Let's see if I missed a question. Layla asks, is it okay to use thing word all the time when speaking or writing or not? Uh, in, formal, in formal writing or speaking, you should not, you should not use thing in formal writing or speaking. If you're writing an essay or doing an interview, don't use thing. So thing, you know, what is thing? If someone said, go to the store and pick up things, you are going to be, huh? You know, things is a not specific word. In formal writing or speaking, we should be specific. Ooh, A for Anna is something big. Women's empowerment needs. So women's empowerment is a, it needs to be implemented in each government in this world. Yes. Most of the discrimination is usually on count occurs because they don't involve they don't involve in the decision. Okay, are my sentence correct? No. Uh, okay, women's empowerment needs to be in, implemented in each government 
in each in each let's say every every government in this world most of the discrimination uh, discrimination let's keep that as uncountable occurs most of the discrimination occurs because they right here we're going to use use put do not but we're going to change that to are not so they women let's just be more specific women are not involved in the decision making process okay women's empowerment needs to be implemented in every government in this world most of the discrimination occurs Even I would take out this most of. Most discrimination occurs because women are not involved in the decision-making process. Okay, Frana. There's some good sentences here. Robin, let's do any quiz next time. <laughs> Sleepwalker. Um. <laughs> Sleepwalker, I, I know uh, the problem is uh, when I made Learn English Live and I have my other uh, channel. So when I made uh, Learn English Live, I guess three or four years ago, Shaw English Online had about 400,000 subscribers but now try English has uh, 1 million <laughs> I've gained a million subscribers so what I'm trying to say is sleep regard I had a lot of time a few years ago now not so much time this is eating up a lot of my time so I will try to do that uh, sleepwalker but uh, it's getting harder and harder every every week to create content for this channel because my other channel is so big. Uh, it doesn't mean I make more money. It just means I have more work. <laughs> Ebche. Hello? Before. Okay. Good to know, Michelle. Yeah, I know. I wish I could do more for this channel, uh, but it's hard. Uh, so do you have any other word instead of thing if you want to talk about something in general? No, nope. just be specific. You know. Pick up some things. No, pick up, be specific. Some apples and bananas. This is best for writing or speaking formally. Andre. Hello, Andre. Okay. Layla has an interesting question. I feel there is an, a nuance between, but I don't know what. He's getting old and he's getting older. What do you think? Hmm. What's the nuance? He's getting old. He's getting older. Uh, well, this yeah would be more kind. You know, I don't want to say, but I will say. You know, kind of a negative thing to say. He's getting old. Now remember, older doesn't mean old. You know, uh, if I have a son and he's three years old. And now he's five years old. He's older. You know, so it's the older is not necessarily about old. It's just older. The age is above. But old is about old, getting old. So, uh, so this is for old people. Let's say he's getting old. He's 60 years old. He's getting older just means maybe maturity. So in this case... I would in this case I wouldn't say he's getting old because this the age is too young 
but I could say he's getting older, which means he's becoming more mature. So it's not, I don't think it's a nuance. I think it's a very direct difference between he's getting old, he's getting older. We, uh, do we, we will have plenty of time. Is it the same meaning as plenty and a lot of? Yeah, plenty and a lot of are the same. We have a lot of time. We have plenty of time. Of course, this, this word plenty is better for your IELTS test. It's a better word than a lot of. Both of them are okay, but of course, this is a little bit better vocabulary. Andre, don't stuff. Stuff and things are words we can use in English, but uh, I'm talking about formal essay. Definitely don't use things or stuff in an essay or an interview. Thank you, Nirmala. Oh. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Well, let's take a look at what Oxford. I'm going to the Oxford Dictionary right now. Let's see, extrovert. All right, so the Oxford Dictionary has extrovert. A lively and confident person who enjoys being with other people. Lively. That maybe that means a lot of energy. I don't think I have much energy. Confident. Maybe I'm confident. I enjoy being with other people. Mm, no, not. I don't think these days, you know, because of the pandemic, everyone likes to be alone. Now, am I an introvert? quiet person who is more interested in their own thoughts and feelings than in spending time with other people. Yeah, probably I'm an introvert, but I'm not shy. I, I'm quiet, but I'm not shy. Nirmala, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Layla has a question. Are you passing through the busiest time for you these days or not? Uh, passing through. Passing through is usually uh, going, th driving through a town or something. I might say, are you going through the busiest time? So you already say you, so you don't need for you again. Are you going through the busiest time these days or not? Are you going through the busiest time? How about your busiest? Are you going through your busiest time these days or not? Yes, I'm going through my busiest time. Sir, what is the proper use of the prepositions on at and in? Now I'm I made a video about that. Let's see if I can f find the video. Preposition. Oh, yeah, I have a. Prepositions practice. Back when I had a beard. I'm going to share that video. Check out that video about prepositions. That will help you. I'm not, I can't teach that right now. Sometimes slangs, I think slang is uncountable, can be so confusing. Yes. How to understand some slang during a conversation we are not familiar with? Well, that's not easy. It's confusing. Uh, 
just ask the person, you know, uh, sometimes when I speak to people and they use slang, I don't know, I will ask them, well, what does that mean? There's no problem to ask, hey, what does that mean? Because I don't understand all slang. Um, and sometimes you can guess from the context of the situation. I have no secret answer. I know some of you are looking for the magical answer. I don't have the, I don't have magical answers. If we say a nuance, could that be a slight difference? Uh, no, I don't think nuance and slight different is the same. Hey, Verana, I can't differentiate differentiate between on the farm and in the farm. I'm happy if you could explain more about that. Thanks. All right. Well, let me think on the farm. Well, there are three pigs on the farm. There are three pigs in the farm. Now I'm going to say the first one is correct. Does that mean the second one is wrong? There are three pigs in the farm. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to say this is awkward or not correct, but again, let's go to Youglish. I'm using Youglish so much. Let's see, in the farm. Let's see what people used it for. In the, how to pronounce in the farm? No. Hello. This is in the farmyard. No. No. Okay, so, sorry for the quiet. Usually this is used as an adjective. So on the farm, this farm, if the farm is a noun on the farm, so the first sentence is correct, on the farm, but you're off from the English I saw, farm is usually used as an adjective which is describing, you know, something after farm. So farm buildings. There are f three pigs in the farm buildings. Uh, used as an adjective. But if you just wanted to express that there's something on the farm, like animals, we would use on the farm. Oh, we have lots of introverts. A hairy robin. A hairy robin. Ooh, that's an ugly blue. A hairy robin. Can we say it like that? Uh, robin is hairy. You can. There's a better way to express someone is hairy. Robin is hairy. Nowadays, I am extremely busy with joining classes, drawing, I'm not sure. Okay, so I don't read in English a lot, but I think in English all the, all the time. And the course is in English. Do you think I'm delinquent? Nope.
Haha, <laughs> is it impossible to understand the slang if you do not know the specific meaning? Well, let's do a test. Now I'm going to say your gumpfi is beautiful. Your gumpfi is beautiful on your finger. What is a gumpfi? So we have information here. We, uh, you know, gumfi is not a real word. I just made that word up right now as a slang. But we have a, a word nobody has heard. You never heard it before. Gumfi, what's that? But we have clues. It's beautiful on your finger. So maybe what do we put on our finger? Well, the only thing we put on our finger is a ring. So... I never heard the word gumfy, but because of the other words, I can my my brain might tell me, hey, that's probably a ring. Okay. So slang is like that. You you some slang is you know, if I said your gumfy is beautiful, we don't have enough information. You have to ask, what is a gumfy? <laughs> but other times we have information, we can figure it out. Uh that's slang. So gumf, the, you guys, gumfy is not a real word. I just made that up now. Do not ever say gumfy again. That is not a word. It was just, this is my example. I'm going to Bali next week. And what is different mean if I say I'm going to Bali could you explain me the first one that I'm using going to and second one I use present con continuous okay I'm going to Bali next week uh, is this a trick question it's the same thing you wrote the same sentence uh Okay, well, maybe you wanted to say I go to Bali next week. Because this is the same as this one. I go to Bali next week with is the present, present simple, and I'm going to, and sometimes we use present simple for future, future action. So both of these mean the same thing. What were you trying to say? I'm going to Bali. I'm going to Bali. So present continuous used for future action. Uh, I'm confused. Do we, can you be more specific? Sleepwalker, don't use that word. Jonathan, hey. So we always need to know the whole context to understand the slang. Yeah, it's a new word. It's the same problem. If I hear the new word, if I can't figure it out by context, I have to ask. And every day I ask people all around the world, what does that word mean? I don't understand that word because uh, I talk to people in English and they use slang and I don't know. I asked them, what does that mean? I never heard that before. Okay, I think I'm going to finish up the uh, live stream now. So thank you. We'll finish up in a minute. So if you guys are typing your questions, get them, get them typed. Read it, a fairy. Hi, finally I'm here. Well, we're leaving. We're 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 finishing up. All right, a Frana. When you're when you're losing your health, that means you're losing your wealth. Health is wealth. Everyone usually takes for granted or takes it for granted. That's how would you express that? 
have a balanced lifestyle that is that that is that can guarantee you to have a beautiful life okay did i fix that out please check my sentences okay there we go when you're losing your health that means you're losing your wealth health is wealth everyone usually takes it for granted takes it for granted we don't appreciate it enough have a balanced lifestyle that can guarantee guarantee you to have a beautiful life okay all right that's it guys uh thanks again see you next week take care and uh keep studying english <laughs>